When the attack comes, if you're prepared, you can get ahead of the bad guy. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from the federal district of, you guessed it, Brazil. After thorough testing, I recently changed my everyday OC spray to Palm Personal Defense Spray. It's nasty stuff and I recommend it highly. As you can see, this is some kind of liquor shop and this guy's got two bottles of whiskey in hand. If you go read the news story that we've linked in the description, he's taking each one up and kind of asking some questions about it. There are several other customers around. You can see he's kind of, you know, asking some weird things, looking around kind of funny. And if you look up, very, you know, top of screen, just to the right, you're going to see the owner come around there and he's like, man, this guy is not acting right. And he's feeling kind of sketchy. So our guy is going to look around, announce a robbery. And when he does, our good guy just pulls his own gun and gets after him four times. Now, bad guy got after him twice as well. If you go read the news story linked in the description, the good guy was not hurt. The bad guy did make it through this one. He uh, was arrested a short time later and is facing charges when he gets out of the hospital. Pretty crazy stuff, and I'm awful glad that that store owner was prepared. If you want to get better at your self-defense, one of the ways that you can do that is by joining us on our Facebook page. Just load up your Facebook app, search for Active Self-Protection. I post links on that page from all over the web to help you get better as a self-defender. Now, let's get to the lessons. So pre-attack cues are a thing, as are transitional spaces. So we talk about transitional spaces that, you know, they offer an element of surprise that the bad guy can attack with an element of surprise. And the element of surprise here is that he acts like a regular customer. Very common in these kind of store arm robberies. But you can see that there are some pre-attack indicators. Notice that he's getting to look around a little bit. And because of that, you see our owner come on scene here and he's looking at that guy. And again, the news story says that he just really felt like the guy was acting weird. Now, sometimes those cues are not easily visible to us on camera, but I would say never ignore your creep alarm because this owner was paying attention to his world. He was seeing what was going on, hearing what was happening. And maybe one of those customers came back and said, man, that guy's acting a little bit funny. And he took, a, a good and appropriate action in order to make himself safer. That's incredibly wise. Now, I also want you to pay attention to the fact that what he's doing here is he stuck his hand in his pocket where his handgun is. We call that cheating the draw. So he's knowing, hey, listen, this guy may not be an incredible threat in the moment. I might be wrong here, but I'm going to get myself ready just in case. Now, you might be able to do that in a waist matted holster as well. Easy to do in a pocket holster. In this case, put your hand in your pocket. Nobody's really the wiser. Can do that both appendix and strong side as well. If you have a cover garment that will continue over your hand, you can just kind of, uh, you know, stay out of sight, out of mind. If you cheat your draw, you can get significantly faster with it. Now then, I want you to notice this target glancing here or this furtive gesture. This guy is looking around and what he is looking around at here is for possible ways of escape, looking for witnesses, looking to see when he's going to launch his attack. Now, I'm not saying somebody looking around is always a deadly threat because, of course, good people are aware of their world and paying attention as well, but it is a pre-attack indicator in addition to everything else that's going on here. Now, he's going to announce his robbery and this is his go signal. So one of the things that we talk about with good defensive handgun skills is the fact that, you know, you get a beep. A lot of times we use a timer with a beeper on it in classes, but in reality, what's going to happen is it's going to be a visual cue. It will almost never be an auditory cue, and that's actually to our favor. It takes us a little longer on the range to react to an auditory stimulus than it does to a visual stimulus. But now we got to talk about being fast on the draw because he's cheated this draw, our good guy has, and he's going to have to get his gun out quickly. And what we're going to see here is he gets that gun out and gets about a 1.4 second draw to first shot from the initial stimulus. But at about 1.0 seconds, our bad guy sees him and at about 1.25, he starts to flinch out of the way. And that flinch gave him just offline enough that our good guy was not able to get a hugely anatomically significant hit, which is why being fast and accurate with your draw to first shot is important. Had our good guy been able to get one in 1.0 or less, bad guy would have never seen it coming. Also look at the backstop, very important that you don't miss because there's good people in the backstop. Now then, I want to notice as well that our good guy here has his handgun out with one hand, so he's got something else in his hand, and it's causing him to take not very well aimed shots. And again, the first one to be anatomically significant with a hit is almost always the one who's going to win. So I can't tell you enough, put two hands on the gun, learn to drop what's in your hands, learn to get rid of whatever it is that's in your support hand, even your mobile device. I know those are expensive, I get it, but still, you're in a deadly fight for your life. Get that stuff out of your hands. You have the best chance to get fast and accurate shots on target. Now, because he didn't, because the bad guy is just thinking about, oh no, I've got, a, you know, I'm, I'm not doing well, but he's not out of the fight yet. Bad guy gets a vote and starts shooting back at him. And notice our good guy here, how kind of 
weird his shooting position is. He's kind of aiming over his shoulder with one hand because of that, and the bad guy gets a vote as well, which is another reason you want to get those anatomically significant hits as fast as you can to get him thinking about that rather than thinking about shooting back at you. If you don't get him hard, that's what happens. He will get to shoot back at you as well. Now then, our good guy is continuing to just wing shots over his shoulder. And this is why we say if you're not shooting, you need to be moving and communicating, but I want you to get in good shooting positions and be proficient with your firearm. Now that takes not just practice, but it takes training. Yes, we do some training on this over on Active Self Protection Extra. Can't recommend it enough that you subscribe over there so that you can learn every single week how to be fast and accurate with your handgun, but it also means going to a professional class and standing on the range with an instructor who can help you and help you get good with it. Now I noticed that our good guy here, he gets to a place where he has put four shots down range and our bad guy has put two, so he decides to move. If you're not moving, or if you're not shooting rather, you should be moving. If you're not moving, you should be communicating. And, and this guy does move, gets out of there and into a better position. I also want you to notice here that those that little anatomically insignificant hit, in other words, not in the high center chest or in the computer, did not get this guy completely out of the fight. It gave just a second of, of startle, but it didn't get him out of the fight. So you want to get those hits because you want him out of the fight as fast as possible because he's still a threat in this moment. Thankfully, he chose to run off, and our good guy did enough. He wasn't hurt. No bystanders were hurt. The bad guy was caught. He's going to end up in prison after his you know, hospital stay is over. So all's well that ends well. So he did a couple of really good things here. He staged his draw. He listened to his creep alarm. He did get a hit, but let's make sure that we have our marksmanship piece well in hand, that we are fast and accurate with our draw to first shot, as fast as we can possibly be, and that we get those anatomically significant hits by having great technique so that that bad guy gets out of the fight as fast as he can when it's time to cover our ASP.